This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Hey, I'm your host, Jason Glick. Good evening, Jason Glick. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Not bad. What you doing? Okay. Well, as I mentioned on the last podcast, I'm going to get around to talking about the, the uh, comic I should have been talking about the last time. That is Deadpool. Because, well, hey, John. Yep. Did, have you seen Deadpool yet? No. Okay. All right. I guess go back to doing whatever you're doing then. Okay, so as um, it's been clearly obvious by now, Deadpool has taken the um, movie going public by storm, like chalking up not only the biggest R rating opening rated opening of all time, but also is now also the biggest X Men film of all time. So basically, this um, this crazy lunatic um character who loves to break the fourth wall has now become like a legitimate phenomenon. And you know, I should have done this two weeks ago when I saw the film, which was great. I mean, it's like, yeah, it was funny. I mean, even if like the film itself was just like your bog standard, you know, superhero story, it was still thoroughly entertaining because um, Ryan Reynolds absolutely nailed Deadpool's character, made it made into a thoroughly funny superhero film. It's like that actually had a you know a decent romance story at its, at its core, and also managed to just make make all the um, the, the familiar stuff pretty in- interesting too. I mean, it's like dead, Deadpool's on pension, breaking, breaking the fourth wall and just, you know, over-the-top, um, ridiculous, violent humor. It's like, just, just um, was translated expertly to film. It's like, and I, it's like, I, I loved it. You know, maybe not, um, you know, best film of the year um, so far, but, you know, it's like, superhero films got kind of a tough bar to beat here. It's like, it even goes for um, X-Men Apocalypse coming out on Memorial Day, which, you know, hey, I'd love to see it be um, even more entertaining than, than Deadpool and um, Days of Future Past. That's kind of a tough part to beat. But um, Batman vs. Superman? Well, I don't know, man. It's like, that's kind of a, a tough, like, um, more funny and entertaining than Deadpool? Yeah, I guess we're going to see about that. Anyway, um, but, you know, as for the comics, though, well, see, this this podcast, you know, kind of marks a, a turning point for me, in the sense that this is this will be the first time I've talked about, um, like the comics that I've read for this podcast that have been digital more than physical copies. Well, because you know, I mean, I mean, whenever I've may have talked about like you know stuff that I've read scanlated in the past, but this is actually legitimate digital stuff that I've actually bought on a tablet. Because, well, as it turns out, um, you know, there is. When it comes down to Deadpool, there's like one run that everyone, you know, kind of goes back to and basically says, you know, this is like, you know, the definitive, like, vert, like, take on the character, like, you know, the best. That would be um, Joe Kelly's um, 32 issue run um, back in the mid 90s. Now, he took a, he took a, um, a Distaff X Men character that, um, no, that, that they figured, hey, well, all the, you know, with all the uh, regular Marvel heroes gone during the whole Heroes Are Born event, let's just give a, like a bunch of, like, um, B and C listers a shot, and um, so he, so Kelly wound up with Deadpool, and he and artist Ed McGinnis, um, by all accounts, turned in a th- a, th- a thoroughly entertaining run that um, basically made the character into a viable superhero, and that you know, so basically, if it wasn't for um, you know Kelly and McGinnis showing that Deadpool could sustain us a solo title, it's like we would not have the uh, it's like it's like the uh, the Deadpool we know today, it's like either in comics or like or in film. So so I I've always wanted to read read this. I've heard so much good stuff about it. So but the only ways to do it were either buy the um one hundred twenty five dollar um Deadpool by Joe Kelly omnibus, you know, well hundred dollars or less via Amazon, or shell out fifty bucks or so and um get it um through uh Amazon get it as an Amazon Kindle read. Well, as it turns out one of my Christmas gifts was a Kindle, so I figured, well Better to make better to make good use of this right here. So, so I figured, hey, so I went went ahead and down, started downloading and reading it. And um, well, let's just say that um, I wound up buying a, a bigger Kindle as things went on because, well, you know, comics and all, like, you need something that's actual comic book size in order to really appreciate this stuff. And also the guided view. Well, guided view on it's like on comics on digital comics. Well. You know, it kind of works a lot better on most modern day stuff where the uh, where you're not doing with like all this '90s like you know, people like making their own panels like out of like trapezoids and poly and like and other polygons. That then since they they cut out a lot of this 
like a lot of the action here, and it makes it really hard to just you know double tap on something and um, so you can read it. Well, it's like like long story sh- long story short. Um, that after this whole experience, I am you know much bigger on reading digital comics, you know mainly for the uh, the the convenience and also for the fact that you know it's like if I want that it takes up a lot less shelf space, and you've got the like the, the insane deals going on here. Like I'm um, expect a uh, podcast about um, IDW's um, Ninja Turtles um, comics. I'm um, in the future after the uh, bundle I brought from them. So yeah, that's the kind of that's the kind of thing that 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 Deadpool has. Um, that um, reading Deadpool digitally has kind of opened my mind to. But what about, you know, the whole Joe Kelly run? Well, you know, it's like I've read Deadpool comics before Joe Kelly's. I mean, I read the entirety of Cable and Deadpool by Fabian, Fabian Nicieza. Probably talked about it um, before on here, too. I've read, um, a good, I read like, a good chunk of um, the uh, current um, run by um, Jerry Dugan and Bri- Brian Posehn. And that's a pretty entertaining, even if there are been certain like crazy shifts, crazy tonal shifts to uh, you know from comedy to drama over the course, and you know certain like still like self indulgent on um, bits as well. But you know, re- going back and reading the Joe Kelly run, you know, I can probably see how um, people uh, like responded to it like back in the nineties because you know the mid nineties, like, it's kind of a we're still coming out of the dark ages of the uh, like of the industry when like you know the whole image you know like superior like you know crazy art over like you know that is like over barely written style was the dominant form and you know when so when you serve a comic that you know is kind of you know you know s- you know decently funny and actually has you know okay, uh, a a story to it like an overarching coherent story to it I could see how people would respond to this. But um, I guess what I'm saying is that the um, the Joe Kelly run probably read a lot better of its era than it does to me now, because you've got well, I'm essentially sure like you know a lot, like you know a lot of Deadpool's like you know, his smart assness, it's like his fourth wall breaking tendencies, it's like and also the uh, crazy shifts towards drama that you know kind of sneak up behind you when you're at least expecting expecting them. It's like a lot of the humor does feel pretty dated. I mean, when you got a character who like love thrives on um, you know, like making current pop culture references, it's like it it's like it doesn't like you know, that stuff's not going to age like age pretty well when you get to um when you're reading it um like in 2016 for the very very first time. It's like and I on one hand I do admit that I and it's um quite frankly pretty amazing that Kelly was able to uh tell like an overarching story that basically involved um you know of, okay you know it's like it, it's impressive that he was able to tell like a um career story over the course of his run but the fact that this story basically involves um you know like uh interdimension marvel's um all-purpose interdimensional galactic holding company landau luckman and lake and i'm uh, basically saying that deadpool is basically like destined to be like the hero that's going to uh you know, bring happiness to uh, help bring happiness to the like, to the to the um, to Marvel's Earth. It's like it's kind of like yeah, you know, this doesn't quite strike me as being like a uh, I mean, the kind of the story that Deadpool is really suited for. I mean, it's like he's just like you know the merc the merc with the mouth. It's like who um it's like loves like you know um trolling his trolling his opponents. It's like and you know try, at least you know trying to make a. Uh, I got at least decent half ass effort towards being, you know, one of the good guys as opposed to just, you know, being a to- being a total um like uh die villain. So so it's so and reading like the, the joke like um a lot of stuff in Joe Kelly's run, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that just like um shifts into like real um and while it's it just start off like pretty pretty fun with him fighting off Sasquatch Going after the uh, guy who uh, and uh, taking on the Hulk. I'm um, going after the guy who um, turned him into who he is in the Weapon X project. There's also a lot of um, like really um, like out of left field drama. It's like in the sense that you know, well, he's got his um, friend, Bl- well, his um, his buddy Blind Al, who you know in the movie, well, like they handled that pretty well in the sense that you know she's just like a blind person who um, Deadpool was hanging out with because you know, hey, she can't see his face. And, you know, and they're cool like that. They just trade insults and all. In the comic, though, like Blind Al is basically Deadpool's hostage, and um, 
so yeah, apparently owes him from way from way back in the day. And um, he at one point he even like Deadpool loses it and like throws her in the box, which is like a uh, like a death trap that he like that he likes to spend time in, just you know, just, like uh, realign his senses and it and everything. It's like that's really that really doesn't work. I mean, it's like yeah, I know it's like you're trying to like Kelly was trying to like show that you know dead that um Wade Wilson wasn't you know, a good guy, but he was trying to be a better person, but. Stuff like this kind of pushes the pendulum way too far in the other way, in the sense that it's like, why are you keeping a uh, this this blind lady that go hostage, you know, in order to appease your ego and all? It's like, and it's like, you know, that just no. And it's like, and there are also other bits when he, uh, you know, has his ass handed to him by um, evil um, sorceress Merc T Ray. It's like that. That also just feel, and also when he um, so he completely um. Like ruins his relationship with um, X Force member Siren. That you know, just feel like you know, it's like you're just trying way too hard to make this dramatic. And you know, like I realize that may have um, worked pretty. W- That's this is also that worked probably worked really well. Came off really well back in the '90s, and I probably would have liked it better in the '90s when you know I was oh say um, like 15 in reading this, and like would have appreciated all like the craziest dramatic shifts and. And and like the overall story being told, but you know, it's like looking back on it now, uh, it's like it just doesn't come together as well. It's like it's like as well as it should. So I mean, it's like and but you know, it's like it does have a uh, have a large hold on the uh, it's, it's like like on the Deadpool mythos, especially when the movie because like you know it um, does bring up stuff like. Like Ajax and like his weapon Weapon X history, it's like and like you know the whole idea of like you know like Deadpool, you know being a mostly comedic character whose um, drama will come back and um, get you like when you least expect it. You know that was that was kind of established in in Joe Kelly's run and so that tend and um some people and I know people have con- concur that you know that tend, that's kind of when it works best, but uh, you know it's like I still feel. My for my money, like the most most fun I've I've encountered with Deadpool is when he was just a supporting character in um Rick Remender's um Uncanny X Force run. It's like he here he was surrounded by you know by Wolver- by Wolverine, Psylocke, Archangel, and Phantom X at their most dour. And not only was he there to provide um straight up comic relief, but he was also there to provide the um the moral center for the uh for the team as well, which is just <laughs> it's just ridiculous when you can okay. yeah so the best thing the best story I've read, really read involving Deadpool was um, when he was used as the uh, comic relief um, in uh, Rick Remender's run on Uncanny X-Force I mean it's like it's like he um, Remender um, did, did a job of like you know just like I mean like he had all these like serious characters to play off Wolverine Psylocke Archangel and Phantom X it's like and then you had Deadpool, it's like on to just, you know, like kind of troll them and provide like bits like, hey, how do you kill it? It's like, how do you kill a carnival worker? Go for the juggler. So, but then, um, and then, but then you also had him like, like, like point out to the fact that, hey, you know, I've never killed any kids. It's like when, in their response, like, you know, taking, when they had to take out the, uh, the, the kid who was going to be um, raised as a new apocalypse in the original arc. So you also had Deadpool, like, serving as, like, the weird-ass moral center of this group as well. And, you know, when you've got Deadpool serving as your moral center, you know, that's, that's kind of just strange, unexpected, and, you know, kind of brilliant as well. So, so, re- so really, it's like, that's, that's kind of the thing I most enjoyed reading Deadpool, reading, um, Deadpool's involvement in, but I will admit the uh, current run by um, Jerry Dugan and Brian Pazane has been pretty entertaining as well. Yeah, it's like the opening arc involving the, all the dead presidents come back, coming back as zombies did go on for too long, but you know it's like he's they've um, told some pretty entertaining stories over the course course of his run or, or the course of the run, even if they have gotten to you know fairly dramatic as well. And all the flashback um, issues from Scott Koblish um, have also been pretty fun as well as a. Um, tie Deadpool to a specific era in comics, and just um, just troll the hell out of like you know the conventions of that era. So that's been that's been fun, and like there's been like a, and even if they have gotten too serious at certain points, it's like there's it's still been like a good there's been good overrunning fun as well. In fact, um, 
like when I was buying st- digital stuff there, one of the things I picked up was the uh, Deadpool Dracula's Gauntlet um, digital comic or infinite comic, as Mar- Marvel likes to put them. That involves that actually has a very um, important plot point for their run on Deadpool because at around volume five, Deadpool gets married to the Queen of the Underworld, Shikla. And you're wondering, well, who the hell is Shikla? Well, you needed to read um, Deadpool Dracula's Gauntlet. So, so this is basically been a, it's a pretty good encapsulation of the uh, it's like of the qualities of the run. It's in good fun. It's a setup that basically involves Deadpool being hired by Dracula in order to um, get this um, queen of the un- queen of the monsters to um, like back to him so he can marry her and consolidate his rule over the uh, over the underworld. Only problem is, as Deadpool um, gets like um, rescues her and gets to know her, they kind of start to fall in love, and eventually, like um, he wants to putting a ring on her as well. It involves like a lot of um, Dead Marvels, like um, it's like um, monster characters, you know, like Blade, like um, the mu- Blade, the Mummy, Frankenstein's monster, and also a centaur who is um, like a werewolf and also infected by um, a Venom symbiote as well. So it's really crazy, goofy stuff that um, that eventually like escalates into a great great comedic cl- climax and also i love the um infinite um format in the sense that you know it's like just how it like it progresses like a uh it it, it allows like you know like the, the action to unfold it's like as you're it's like as you're reading it and and also just the fact that it doesn't spoil me if like when i'm reading like a comic book i will suddenly glance over to the um second to the um to the right hand side of the page and of the book and realize oh i shouldn't shouldn't have read that first i should just keep focus on the left hand side first so, but it, so really, it's like the uh, Deadpool Dracula's Gauntlet. I haven't read it in um, print, but you know, it's like the uh, it's kind of hard to imagine. I can see how they would make it work, but reading it digitally, actually, I'm um, pretty cool. It's like and pretty and like I can see, and I'm pr- pretty glad that I you know picked it up for like four bucks instead of like the uh, thirty five that it's being offered for in print. So there you go. I mean. I guess if you're if you're looking for a good one-off run on Deadpool that um, kind of encapsulates everything that, like, well, the, the best of his the the appeal, the appeal of his character, the current appeal of his character, so to speak, um, pick up the gaunt, um, Dracula's Gauntlet. Um, my only real gripe, though, I think is that um, it's like for reasons that are unknown to me, they um, went with a uh, you know a clean cut version of Dracula instead of the um, badass um, goatee Dracula of Marvel's past, and also as recently as the uh, Vampire State um, arc of um, Captain Britain at MI6, M- MI13, um, from Paul Cornell. It's like, anyone remembers that? You know, it's like, hey, you're, like, you're cool in my book. But um, the whole um, Dugan Pazane run is pretty, I-, I think it's pretty good, but, you know, for all I know, it could be like, you know, the curse of Deadpool, that, you know, in that he's a guy who loves to break the fourth wall, make cur- references to a lot of current stuff. Maybe it's like, you know, like, everyone will have their own, um, favorite incarnation of the character whether or not he's like you know from the joe kelly run maybe you'll like the uh the gail simone run from the later like from the uh early early aughts or the like or, or you know even maybe nicias is um, cable and deadpool run or you know like the current um dugan pizane run which has been great great fun too so or hey you know maybe your favorite is going to be like you know the ryan reynolds um film film version hey deadpool is a um it's like he it's like he's a He's he's got a got a simple concept in the sense that he's like he's a great he's into he digs the ultra violence loves breaking the breaking the fourth wall it's like and make it's like it's entertaining everyone along along the way so I mean he's there's been a ton of comics featuring him over the years and like this is only like a small like I've only touched on a small um, portion of them but you know it's like he there a lot of them you know been pretty pretty entertaining too. So, John, like after all this, um, any thoughts on your end? So, appealing in any media format? Is that how we're going with this? That seems to be the case. I mean, like, I'm honestly kind of surprised at how Deadpool's um, popularity has just kind of s- exploded, like, in the last, um, five, last five or six years, in the sense that he, was, he had gone from being all, viewed as almost also Rand, who had to share a book with Cable, to um, be, be, being able to, to uh, support his own ongoing series and a series of miniseries as well. Impressive. So, what do you have on tap for us next week? Uh, I guess you're just going to be surprised because, like, right now the uh, the favorite is um, um, me talking about all three volumes of Edgar Baker and Sean Phillips' Fade Out. But 
you know, I could something else could uh, pop up in the meantime. We shall see. Okay, we'll catch you next time on Common Picks by the Glick. Later. Bye.